Dilated cardiomyopathy is a disease of the muscle tissue of the heart, characterised by a dilation of the ventricles, particularly the left ventricle, leading to a systolic dysfunction. It is the most common form of cardiomyopathy and is seen around twice as frequently in men than in women. It is also more commonly seen in African Americans than it is in Caucasian populations. Most patients are diagnosed between the ages of 20 and 60, although younger and older patients can also be affected. It features a poor prognosis of 50% survival in two years, with most of the mortality coming from heart failure or ventricular arrhythmias. Dilated cardiomyopathy is divided into primary and secondary, and in most instances there is no obvious cause, which is termed idiopathic. There may be a genetic cause, however if there is no clear genetic cause, it is often classified as being idiopathic. There have been mutations in various parts of the cardiac myocytes implicated, including Desmin, Lamin C and Myosin. Secondary causes include infectious myocarditis, such as post-viral infection like Coxsackie B, or other infections like Chagas disease or Lyme's disease. Infiltrative diseases like sarcoidosis, alcohol use, chemotherapy such as doxorubicin and hypertension may all lead to dilated cardiomyopathy and pregnancy is another possible cause that is reversible in around half of cases. The hallmark of pathology in dilated cardiomyopathy is remodelling of the left ventricle. This is seen as a thinning of the ventricular wall, giving a reduced ejection fraction and gradually increasing end systolic and end diastolic volumes. This dilation continues and can lead to valvular dysfunction such as mitral and tricuspid insufficiency, which further worsens the ejection fraction. There are two main compensatory mechanisms that occur in response to the pathology. This can be better visualised with the cardiac output formula, which is given by stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. To maintain the cardiac output, the body compensates by attempting to either increase the heart rate or the stroke volume by increasing contractility or preload. The first mechanism is the Frank Starling law, which states that contractility increases as the stretching of the ventricle increases, measured often as stroke volume compared to end diastolic volumes, known as preload. Initially, as the end diastolic volume increases, there is a matched increase in stroke volume that maintains the cardiac output. However, at a certain point, this relationship breaks down. So as the end diastolic volume continues to increase, the stroke volume stops increasing and then begins to decrease. At this point, the compensation mechanism is failing and the cardiac output drops, resulting in heart failure. The second compensatory mechanism is the neurohormonal response via the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system, which attempts to increase blood volume and therefore preload as well as maintaining blood pressure. The second component is the sympathetic nervous system, which increases contractility and heart rate. As remodeling continues and the left ventricular function decreases, the compensatory mechanisms are overwhelmed and even exacerbate the deterioration, leading to heart failure. Many patients are initially asymptomatic. When symptomatic, it is often the result of left ventricular systolic dysfunction, which can include peripheral edema, orthopnea, which is breathlessness when lying flat, sometimes accompanied by paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, meaning a sudden shortness of breath during sleep that often wakes the patient up. In some instances, patients may present with chest pain or syncope, possibly as a result of arrhythmias, and may also suffer from sudden cardiac death. Physical exam findings can include bilateral crackles on auscultation of the lungs, pitting peripheral edema, raised jugular venous pressure, a displaced point of maximum impulse, 
and potentially an S3 gallop or murmurs on auscultation of the heart. Echocardiography is the first line imaging done and part of the criteria for dilated cardiomyopathy include left ventricular dilation shown by end diastolic dimensions more than 112% of the expected for the age and body surface area. As well as this, there must be evidence of dysfunction, shown by an ejection fraction of 45% or less, or a fractional shortening value of less than 25%. These values are for idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy, therefore secondary causes of dilated cardiomyopathy need to be ruled out. The treatment of dilated cardiomyopathy involves treating any reversible identified causes and in persistent or idiopathic cases the treatment is primarily medical. It is similar to treatment of other causes of systolic heart failure including the use of beta blockers, ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers and aldosterone blockers may be used in cases where the patients fit into class 2 or 4 of the New York Heart Association heart failure class. Implantable cardioverter defibrillators are placed in patients with a high risk of arrhythmias and heart transplant is considered in patients who are not responding to medical therapy. Survival rates post-transplant have been shown to be as high as 90% at one year and over 50% in 20 years.